drawing students. So if you're watching this video, it means that you've turned in your permission slip with your parent's signature as well as your signature. Um, mostly this is just protecting and making sure that we're gonna get all of our drawing supplies back in an expected manner. Um, so obviously you're gonna use your pencils, obviously you're gonna use some charcoal and your erasers are gonna be quite a bit smaller. Um, but I would like to have the, the portfolios, the pencil boxes, everything that you have back um, in whatever condition it is in. Um, check back in to me when you're finished using it. Now let's get into some of the things that you are going to be receiving. So first of all, you're going to get a paper or cardboard portfolio made from recycled materials, um, but it is heavy duty enough that we should be able to use these again in the future. Um, what else you're going to get? You're going to get a blue pencil box. Um, there are a couple red ones, so if you get a red one, you're just extra special. Um, I'm going to give you two pieces of tape with the masking tape. I would like for you to stick it on your pencil box on the top where you can see it, write your first and last name, and then your class code, which for us this year is our um, hour that we're enrolled in. Um, so second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seven, and your A or B. Um, so that is your class code. So it would be 4B or 4A, whichever hour you're in. Um, so first and last name and class code. And then also likewise on your portfolio, stick it on where you can see it really visibly, first and last name and your class code, okay? So what's inside of your pencil case? So inside of your pencil case, you will have charcoal, vine, and compressed charcoal. You should have two pieces of vine charcoal and one piece of compressed charcoal. Um, so what that is, it's pretty fragile, and this is why I taped it up. So we're not going to be opening this until we do our charcoal exploration unit. So please, please, please don't open this. I'm going to show you what that looks like though, so that you um, don't have to feel like you need to open it. So when you buy compressed charcoal, this is compressed charcoal, it's a little bit harder. It's heavier duty. Um, it's less likely to break um, when you're drawing with it. Obviously it will break if you drop it. Um, so please be careful with your pencil cases because this is, um, enough charcoal for you to use for the semester. So um, this is compressed charcoal. It's a little bit darker when you draw with it. Um, it comes in different, you, some of you might have these thinner sticks. Um, some of you have the thicker ones. It doesn't matter, especially because for the details, you guys have two charcoal pencils, which um, these, there's one 4B, is soft, um, so it draws pretty dark. 6B is even softer, so it draws even darker. The B stands for bold or brittle. I like to think bold in my head. It actually stands for brittle. So it means that if it were to be drawn with really pretty hard, it could um, break a little bit, and that's okay. Um, just so long as you're not abusing it or dropping it, um, it should last. Uh, vine charcoal is a lot more delicate. So you can see how this one kind of even splintered off just inside of this pencil case. Same with these ones. Um, so you can see it comes in a long stick. I have broken your stick in half so that you have two of them um, that should look like this. And it's just that easy to break. Um, so obviously charcoal um, comes from wood that has been um, singed. Um, so oftentimes you can kind of feel, this one feels like a really natural material. It feels like a vine that has been singed almost. Um, even though it's a little bit more complicated than that, um, that's the gist of vine charcoal. It's quite a bit lighter when you draw with it and it can be kind of powdery and make kind of a mess. So if you're using charcoal, be sure that you um, 
are in a place where you have something down underneath. And also look at my fingers just from touching that for just a minute. So you might even wanna have a tissue with you if you're using charcoal. What else you have in here? So you have your two charcoal uh, pencils and you have your two charcoal sticks. One of them is actually uh, one and it's been broken in half already for you. Hopefully not broken more than that. So what else you have in here? You have two kinds of erasers. Kneaded erasers are great for if you're drawing with chalk or you're drawing with charcoal and you make a mistake or would like to lift something off. Likewise, if you're using graphite, you can lift off. To rejuvenate your kneaded eraser, you can pull it apart um, again and again and it kind of brings back the sticky and that's what makes it erase. Instead of rubbing with it um, when it's in its ball form, um, that it would be more like lifting. So you're sticking it on and you can kind of shape it. If you need a smaller space lifted off, you stick it on and then lift it off. Uh, your polymer eraser, this one, it doesn't leave as much um, little shreds of eraser on your drawing as um, your big pink erasers for regular class would. We have a couple of kinds of Sharpies in here. Uh, this is really, this is a Sharpie pen. It's very similar to a Micron, which a Micron is a drawing utensil that are used by professional artists that can be very expensive and they're not as heavy duty. So they're likely to, when you draw with a marker, that it could go inside of the tip, the felt would go inside of the tip likely. But this one should be a little bit stronger. That's why I purchased the Sharpie pens. Um, you also have a fine point Sharpie for doing um, a little bit bolder, um, more heavy lines with your mark making. We also in the charcoal family have white charcoal for you to use. So if you have um, say, a drawing where it's on mid-tone paper, which hint, hint, you're going to be getting mid-tone mid paper. Um, and you want to put the lightest parts, so the parts that are actually white or close to white, you're gonna be using your white charcoal for the highlights. Now, when we talk about our different pencils, um, we are talking about how light or dark they are. Um, along with these, you of course have your pencil sharpener. It has a side for colored pencils and it has a side for um, your regular sized pencils. So if you have larger pencils, it has another side for that. So, um, which the charcoal ones kind of work better in the bigger side, just a tip. Um, so your scale, I will show you just in a second. So I have drawn out here for you um, with the same pressures, uh, your 2H, your HB, your 2B, your 3B, your 4B, your 5B, and your 6B, which your 6B came in a different shipment. So it's the blue pencil, it's your darkest one. The B stands for brittle, or I like to think of it as bold sometimes. Um, H stands for hard. So the lead of these ones is less likely to break than the brittle. So if you drop a 6B pencil, just like your charcoal is more likely to break on you. Um, and when it breaks, it can sometimes break inside of the pencil. So try to be careful with your pencil case so that it, the lead isn't breaking inside of your pencil. Because what happens when you try to sharpen a pencil that is broken on the inside is you'll sharpen it and it comes off. It sharp, you sharpen it and it comes off. Um, so colored pencils are the same way where they're very soft, especially when you get into more professional colored pencils, that they're more likely to break um, on the inside when they've been dropped. So if you have trouble sharpening your colored pencils, that could be why. Um, so really take care of your tools and art supplies. Speaking of colored pencils, if you are interested in using colored pencils for some of your projects, so some of the more open-ended projects like your cultural heritage perseverance project coming up, um, it would be one where you could 
potentially check out colored pencils from me. Um, we're using a scan system this year where you would scan your barcode on your ID and the scan on the colored pencil kit that you are checking out. So then it would be linked to you and something that I would expect to come back from you. Um, so now inside of your portfolio, um, some of the sizes of paper that you're getting, uh, most of the white paper that you're getting is all white sulfite paper, um, which is a kind of paper that is supposed to stand the test of time. So it has a harder time of yellowing. Um, it should hold up a little bit better. So as soon as you pull it out, you see that you have a sketchbook from the art department. It's really nice. There's a spot for your name. Um, there's a spot for your hour. We could even put um, one of the departmental rubrics um, in here, which I'm hoping to do something like that with you guys for a reminder. Also, this is newsprint. Um, if you're doing anything with a Sharpie, you would put this down. So save this paper. Obviously, we want to save as much paper as we can um, so that we're not creating more waste for the environment. But um, this paper is to help your other papers not to bleed through and so that you can use the same paper again and again for that. Um, you have four pieces of five by seven um, that are kind of the size of a large note card. Okay. And then you have five pieces of eight by 10. So eight by 10 pieces of white sulfite paper that should be uh, museum quality. And then you have 10 pieces of 11 by 14 white sulfite paper. And then you should have one mid-tone, really nice heavyweight Canson paper, um, which Canson is just the brand name and they make um, paper that has a little bit more teeth on it. So the teeth of the paper are what holds um, the graphite, charcoal, colored pencil, um, that it can hold a little bit more. So when we're drawing, we're trying not to crush the teeth of the paper. So a really nice paper, some of these are, this one's kind of, it feels a little bit softer or not as pressed together and it's a little bit thicker. It is really good if you're trying to build up and make dark, dark uh, values on your paper that you can get a lot more contrast with it too. Um, at this point though, I think for a lot of us, it's more about practicing and it's less about our quality of the materials that we have. Um, practice is where we get better, um, less on relying on the materials to be really, really good or professional quality, which you guys have professional quality things. Don't get me wrong. Okay, so what we have last um, but not least, this one's really important that we take care of it because it's your drawing surface. Uh, this is our drawing board. It's 11 by 14, the same size as your biggest pieces of paper. So if you don't have a flat surface that doesn't have, see if I were drawing on this table, this table has some little marks in it, like somebody used an X-Acto knife and didn't have a board down underneath it. So please don't X-Acto knife on this or cut into it in any way that you want to save uh, your drawing board for drawing so that when you're drawing on this surface that you don't get little dips in it. Um, you guys understand. So I will have you now go ahead and fill out your Google form of the different materials and tools that you're getting in your drawing kit.